Okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. You are on six steps to close out year end with ease. My name is Ceci Spear. I will be your host uh, today. We have the expert uh, M.A. Morgan on the line. She is our year end expert. <laughs> I'm gonna start off our, our presentation today with some introductions. I'll go over the agenda real quick on what our six steps actually are, and then I'll kick it over to M.A so that she can take us through the steps so that we can make sure that year end closes out with ease and it is a non-event, right? That's always our goal <laughs> with this type of thing. So let's kick it off. Um, like I said, my name is Ceci Spear. I'm the Director of Marketing. I've been here at Mosaic for a little bit of, well, actually this, this month will be six years for me at Mosaic. Um, we have M.A. Morgan on the line. She has been at Mosaic for more, a little bit, bit more than six years. And we have actually done a webinar about year end for the last five years. So it's been really great uh, to have M.A. here, to have her as, the, as our um, in-house expert. So M.A. has had, she is our senior premier services consultant and year end expert. And she's had the dubious pleasure of starting her payroll career just in time to handle year end for a chain of fast food restaurants back in the day of dial up internet and dot matrix printers. But she persevered and is now here with two decades of experience under her belt and she can warn you of the perils, pitfalls and opportunities that each year end brings. Um, we also have Caitlin Scarston on the line. She is our fabulous marketing coordinator. Caitlin is going to be managing our Q&A box and our chat box. So if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat box or the Q&A box. If Caitlin can answer them via text, she will do that through those chats uh, or she'll find a good stopping place so that we can ask Emma the question that you had. So please, please feel free to, to send in the questions as they come up and we'll make sure to find a good stopping place. Caitlin, I'm gonna ask you if you don't mind to drop in a link into the chat box uh, with, that's the link to our blog. So at the end of today's webinar, um, and we'll probably wait a, about an hour so that the, the recording of this webinar processes and we'll upload it into this blog. So right now the blog is some notes around this information. Once we record this uh, recording, once we process this recording, we'll put it on the blog with a link for you guys to download the slides that we use today as well. So at the end of today, you'll get an email from me um, with information on how to download all that fun stuff. Cool, uh, so let's jump in and talk a little bit about what we're gonna be, what, what our steps are. So six steps to close the year with ease. We're gonna start with company information and processes. Then we're gonna move on to step two, which is employee information. We're gonna talk about prepping the system, the system specifically being UKG Pro. Um, that is what Mosaic, Mosaic is an expert in all UKG technology uh, and this specifically is for the pro side. Um, and we'll talk about the year end process. It's the new year, we'll move on to it's the new year. Why do we still call it year end even if we're in January? There's a reason I guess, maybe. <laughs> um, and then our last step is post, submit and mail. So. MA, without further ado, I will kick it over to you. Thank you. Hi guys, I am MA Morgan. Um, this is what I do. See, that was easy. Um, so we're gonna start out kind of on the ground floor. These aren't really steps. This is just some basic information for you. Um, the first one, the checklists are available. There is a checklist for enterprise and a checklist for mid-market year-end. If you're not sure which one you are, if you are familiar with what back office is, you are an enterprise client. Um, so these checklists, checklists are available on the customer success portal. You can download them. Um, I also like to keep it on my computer because they've got hot links to re reports and such. So it's easy that way, but it's a nice little checklist what you need to do when you need to do it by. Um, if you are mid-market, the year-end gateway is open. It's on the administration tab under year-end. And it's kind of like the checklist, but it's within UKG. So you can click, click, click and go through the steps. It takes you directly to the reports that you need. Um, the next thing you wanna keep an eye out for year-end UKG announcements. Most of them have already gone out. 
but you never know when somebody's going to drop something new and exciting on us for year end because it's not like we're doing anything else this time of year. Go ahead, give us new stuff to do. If you are not getting the news wires, um, find out who in your company is getting them. Make sure they're forwarding them to you or see if you can sign up for the news wires. Especially on the payroll side, you get a lot of notifications about, we fix this tax, we fix this tax. So you know when things are working properly and what you need to do to get them applied to your system. They're fascinating. And those um, are UKG news, from UKG, yes. right? Yes, they are UKG Newswires. Uh, the last thing is if you have done this before and you've had UKG print your W-2s and you had to go out and you had to register to print your W-2s, you don't have to do that anymore. UKG is now a first come, first serve W-2 printing service. You don't have to register. You just have to go out and drop the files. And again, that information is on the customer success portal, where to go, how to drop the files. I've mentioned first come, first serve. If you wait until the end of January, you're not gonna get those done in time. So you kind of wanna be closer to the front of the line than the back. If you are printing the W-2s yourself, you, sh you need to order the forms now, if you haven't already. We all remember how much fun Christmas was last year with packages not being delivered until like March. It's not any better this year. So if you're having them sent to you, you're gonna need extra time for that. If you're going to the corner Staples store to pick them up, they're having them shipped to them. So you wanna get those ordered now. Um, order more than you need because when you realize that you didn't order enough, you're not gonna be able to find more. And order enough envelopes. Now, the good thing about the envelopes, the envelopes they use now for W-2s, unless you're getting the, the self-sealers, but the regular W-2s that you stuff in an envelope, the envelopes they use for those are the same ones that we used for W-2s back when I started this 20-some years ago. So if you order too many, that's great. Put them on a shelf. Remember where they are. You can use them next year. So let's move on. So step one, level one, company info and processes. Okay. So the first steps in getting ready for year end is making sure that all of your company information is ready for year end and your, everybody else is ready for year end. So find out who is issuing, issuing W-2s for your third-party pay. This is your short-term disability, your long-term disability, sick pay, stuff like that. Um, especially if this is a new vendor or you're new with the company. Who's doing that? Get that in writing. It's a useful piece of paper to have when they change their mind. If you are issuing the W-2s, you want to make sure that you've got that, those reports from the vendors and that you have been putting the information into your system as you get the reports. Find out when they're going to send you your final Q4 report because you need to have that before the deadline for adjustments. Otherwise, anybody on disability in Q4 is an adjustment and you don't want to do those. Tax IDs, you wanna make sure that you have all of your tax IDs set up for state and local taxes. Generally, federal taxes are not an issue because you need a federal ID to create a component company in UKG. However, if you do have a new component company, now's a really good time to make sure you've got that number in there right. Um, you can create locations do taxes with applied for as your tax ID on the state and local side because some states won't even let you apply for a tax until you've processed your first payroll. So now's the time to go through and make sure you've got all of the, the IDs updated. There is a report you can run for this. It's a standard report. It's on the checklist. So you can run that. It'll show you all of the tax IDs you have set up for all of the locations, the states, the companies. Um, the next thing you want to do, earnings and deductions, you want to make sure you have the correct tax category attached to these. This is the one that determines 
if, a ta if an earning or a deduction is taxable, is it subject to Social Security, Medicare, whatever? You really only need to look at this for new earnings and deductions, new to 2021. Unless you're new to UKG entirely for this year, then you wanna go back and double check them. Odds are they're correct, but you really don't wanna find a mistake in January or February. You kind of wanna find it in November. Um, the last one that's kind of important is if this is your first year doing year end, first year doing year end at your company or first year doing year end with UKG, you want to nail down what you are responsible for and what somebody else is responsible for. You want to get all of that taken care of. I, I refer to the level of detail as, as idiot level, um, not to imply there are any less than intelligent people on the call. I had a controller once who said, well, you just do the normal payroll stuff. And I was like, um, we were talking about quarter end, not year end. And I said, Payroll doesn't do anything for quarter end. The tax service does it all. He didn't really know what we did. He just had an idea of what we should do. So we needed to nail down what did he think payroll did at quarter end. So you need to do the same thing for year end. If they say, well, you just do the payroll stuff. No, 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 no. Let's break it down. These are the things that the checklist has have to be done. Which ones am I doing? Which ones are you doing? Which ones am I getting from somebody else? Um, if UKG is your tax processor, then they'll have that information. The checklists are kind of assuming UKG processes your paychecks and your taxes. If you have a third party, then you need to find out what their deadlines and processes are. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I just inhaled a spider. It tickled. <coughs> um, yeah, you want to make sure, and it's not just in the payroll department, in the accounting department, you need to get HR involved, you need to get management involved, you need to find out what everyone's expectations are. Um, I'm going to take a drink and Ceci's going to speak for a second. Yeah, um, I was going to ask you, if there, it seems like a couple questions came in. Uh, one is, if you find out that there was an incorrect social security number change on UKG before year end, do you need to open a case to notify UKG? If it's social security, no, you can just fix it yourself. Okay. As long as it's fixed before year end, they should be good. As long as it's fixed before W-2s are posted, yes. Before W-2s are posted, awesome. And then um, the other question is uh, what report, were, did you, you mentioned the report for the tax IDs. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know the name? It's a standard report, but do you name, know the I, name of the report? I believe it is the tax setup report a tax setup report. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I really love that you taught, you told us a little bit about um, the importance of communication with your team, right? It's important to understand the process, to find out what the process is. If this is your first time doing year end with your team, to understand the process of how they've done it in the past. But I also think it's important to, to mention, make sure to everyone on your team understands what the process is going to be this year. So if you have a new person, a new executive, um, like I think you have a really good example, a really good story of miscommunication there uh, that you might be able to share with us. Yeah, so it was my very first year end with uh, my new company. It was my last real job. And it was actually the first year end with UKG. And, and part of what we were all excited about in the payroll and accounting side was that UKG did online W-2s. And so we were like, great, everybody's getting an online W-2 unless you no longer work for the company, then we'll print it out and mail it to you, yay. This is fabulous. That's what we did. January 30th, the executive assistant to the CEO comes in and says, hey, Mr. CEO doesn't have his W-2 yet. Well, it's available online. Well, he wants it on paper. Well, you can print it. There's a little print button that says print. No, he doesn't want to print it. He wants a printed copy. Oh, okay. Let me go. I'll print his W-2 form. Give me five seconds. She's like, no, 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 no. He wants everybody in the company to get a printed W-2, regardless of whether they signed up for online or not. On January 30th. 
January 30th, they gave me this information. So you guys remember I said that when you find out you need W-2s, you can't find them? Yeah. You call Staples. Do you have any W two blank W-2s for the year? They laughed at me and hung up. Um, so we actually printed out my W-2, whited out all of the information, made 1,500 copies front and back of the W-2. And then because the W-2 print file, now this was... This was back in the dark ages. The W-2 print file that I could download from UKG was just the data. There were no lines. So we printed out, we made our own blank W-2 forms and then we printed 1,500 W-2s, stuffed them in envelopes. When we ran out of the W, the envelopes because it's the same ones you use for 1099, so accounting had them. When we ran out of envelopes, we printed mailing labels and put them in number 10 envelopes. And yeah, um, I dropped them off at the post office on my way home late on the 31st of January. And then from then on, we printed everybody's W-2s. Setting and resetting expectations is important and just making sure that all stakeholders are aware of, of your plan um, and the process that you hope to follow this year. Okay, so let's move on to step two. Step two, employee information. So this is the part, this is the part that becomes visible to all of the employees. Um, this is where you want to make sure you've got good information on your employees. You want to verify that their names are correct. Prefixes and suffixes need to belong, need to go in the prefix and suffix boxes. Um, it is not Mr. Anderson Cooper. If Mr. Anderson Cooper Jr. is not, Mr. Anderson is his first name. So you need to make sure that those get fixed. Um, you kind of want to look at the suffixes because I know from my experience when people put them in, instead of using capital I's for the second or the third, I, 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 they use lowercase I's and it just looks wrong and it doesn't get read correctly. So you want to eyeball those, make sure they look correct. Um, you want to look at the addresses, especially if your employees are putting the information in themselves because employees don't always know the proper abbreviation of things like boulevard or street. They don't always put their apartment number on the next row or they'll do both. Um, 910 Stewart Street, apartment one is in address line one and apartment one is in address line two which the post office doesn't like it. Clean these things up if you can. I mean, obviously if you've got a lot of employees, you're not gonna go line by line and check them out. But hopefully if you can divvy the list out, the really bad stuff will stick out. Um, you want to look at social security numbers. You should not be able to hire people with all nines as a social security number, but it can be done. The system will let you do it. So you want to look at them and make sure they look correct. Um, it was asked about social security numbers. As long as you make the correction before W-2s are printed, you're good to go. The same goes with name changes. Um, just make them when you're aware of them and you're good to go. You do want to make sure that um, the employee's address in the system matches their tax setup. So then you know that they're being taxed correctly. And then remind them about signing up for electronic W-2s because that's so much easier. And we've mentioned shipping. Mailing those W-2s is going to take longer this year than it did two years ago. Um, another suggestion I have is maybe sending a postcard to all of your terminated employees. Um, people move, you know, we've had the great resignation. We've had people popping from job to job to job this year. Um, people working remotely and suddenly realizing they don't have to live within a 30 minute drive of the, of the office. They can move two hours away, get a bigger house on a bigger lawn with a smaller mortgage. So a lot of people are doing that. So maybe send a postcard to all of your terminated employees that says, hey, it's year end. This is where your W-2 is going to get mailed. 
you might wanna let us know if this isn't where you live. Worst case scenario, you get them back and you at least made the attempt. You know how many W-2s are gonna get returned by the post office as undeliverable. And you can make your plans for that. I think yeah. Caitlin has an interesting story for us on making sure her address was updated within the system. I sure do. We were running through this presentation and it dawned on me that I had actually not updated my address um, from when I had started this job to my recent move to Tennessee from Illinois. Um, and so after the practice session and going through the PowerPoint, I went through and went into UKG Pro and updated my address and my W-4. Um, and then another thing I had noticed was I was living in Illinois, which was what my um, form was originally. And then I had moved to Tennessee where there's no state income tax. So then that had been changed as well. So yeah, you had I, an instant I, raise. <laughs> I did all thanks to MA, you know, thank you MA for that. <laughs> Anytime. Um, and, and we got a quick question here too. Uh, the correct place to put apartment numbers on, on the address lines is the second address line, correct? So it's uh, street yes. number and then apartment number is the second yeah. line. Mm -hmm. yep. Now, if, if your employees have it on the first line, that's okay. It's when they have it on the first line and the second line that you kind of run into problems. Confuse the post office. And then you mentioned it is gonna be hard to get, the, the post office is gonna be a little bit delayed. Mm -hmm. um, as long as the post date is before the deadline, yes. everyone's good, right? As long as your W-2 is postmarked on January 31st or by January 31st, you've met your requirements. Because I think, I think when we were talking about this before, you said that the post office has said any, if it's not within your state or the bordering states, mm -hmm. um, mail, the mail that is supposed to go fast is probably going to go a little slower this year. Express, is it express mail? It's normally just first class. I mean, first class. You don't want to spend 20 bucks to send a W-2 to somebody. No, yeah, that sounds expensive. Okay, I think there might be another question. Yeah. Can a notification be put on the MySelf dashboard to remind employees to confirm that their address is correct? So I believe so. Um, I know in the old style, uh, UKG Pro, when you logged in, you could put company information, you could update it. We always did update it with a, a blurb about electing an electronic W-2, updating your address, checking this, that, and the other. The new style, I'm not 100% sure how to do that, but I know a whole bunch of my peeps here at Mosaic know how to do that. So um, if you're not sure how to do that, reach out to your, uh, your consultant, whoever you're working with. If they can't help you, they know who can. If you don't have a consultant currently, then you can reach out to Ceci and Ceci will hook you up with somebody and we'll help Definitely. you out. Yes, please. At the end of today, I'll be sending out an email with link all the links we promised. You can reply directly to that email with any questions and I'll make sure to get it to the right person. Mm -hmm. Our next level is prep the system. Okay. Okay. So our next step is getting the system ready for year end. And this is really getting the system ready for next year is most of what this does. Um, you want to create your holiday calendar in UKG. So basically what this does, it's a very important step. What you're doing is you're going into the payroll system and you're saying the, the payroll section and saying, these are the bank holidays for 2022. You have a setting that was done when you set up each pay group that says, if payday is a holiday, do I pay the day before or the day after? So if you pay on Thursdays, just to pick a day that'd be really easy to give a holiday for, if you pay on Thursdays and Thanksgiving is a scheduled payday, people are not gonna get paid on Thanksgiving. The banks are closed. So typically standard, they would be paid on Wednesday. Setting the holiday calendar lets the system do that automatically. It'll just say, oh, that's a holiday. Let me move the date instead of you having to go through and, and change the date one by one. Um, you really only need the bank holidays that fall 
on paydays. So Mosaic pays on Friday, we would only need Friday bank holidays put in there. You don't have to do all of them because they don't do anything other than shift that payday. Now, let's say your company has a policy that if it's a company holiday, <clears throat> different from a bank holiday, so we get the day after Thanksgiving off. If the day after Thanksgiving is a holiday, and ooh, I think it is, it's a company holiday. So if Mosaic had a policy that we don't get paid on company holidays, then they would put that day in as well and the system would skip the pay date. So those are the only holidays you need to put in, the ones that directly impact payday. Um, once you've done that, you can extend your holiday calendar into 2022, which is pretty easy. Um, it's actually, there's a button, extend holiday calendar, extend payroll calendar, does the whole thing to 2022, all your dates are fixed, it's fabulous. Um, the next thing, if you use a timekeeping system that is more advanced than people writing their time down on a sticky note and turning it in, I've done payroll that way, it's a lot of fun. Um, you want to update the holiday calendar for 2022 because odds are your timekeeping system goes, oh, look, it's Christmas, it's a holiday for everybody, and plugs that in on timesheets. Um, if you are using a UKG Pro timekeeping system, and I am going to use the old terms for them because I'm old and I've been working with these a very long time. So that's how I know them. UTA, UTA UTM, WFM, which I think is called UKG Pro Ready. Just and UKG Ready and UKG, just UKG Dimensions. Ready. And then UKG Dimensions. Okay. If you're using one of those and you're not sure how to do the holiday calendar, once again, Somebody at Mosaic can help you. Reach out to Ceci, reach out to your consultant, we'll hook you up. If you're using somebody else's timekeeping system, I'm not judging, but <laughs> you wanna reach out to them and make sure you know how to get those holidays set up. Um, the last thing you need to do is you need to create a supplemental pay dated 12-31-21. The purpose of this supplemental pay is to collect all of your adjustments all of your, um, even your prior period adjustments if you're making them in January. Once you post your final payroll of 2021, as far as UKG is concerned, <clears throat> anything you do after that, any adjustment, any manual check, anything is gonna post to the next payroll, which is in January, 2022, which is not when you want them to happen. So putting that 1231 supplemental in there means that when you create that that adjustment, that manual check, whatever, it's still going to post to 2021. You've got time now, go ahead and get them set up because odds are when you're doing those last minute adjustments in 2021 at the end of the year and you hit the, you put it in, they're like, this is going to post to January. And you're like, oh, let me take everything out and let me set this up. I should have listened to MA and done this in November. Um, do it now while you've got the time. If it turns out you don't need it, it's very easy to, to inactivate it and go straight to January. But if you have it there, it's less work when the stress time hit, hits and you're trying to do those adjustments. That makes a lot of sense. Be prepared. Yes. Um, and now let's talk about year end itself. Yes, this is the actual year end. This is December. This is, um, you process your final payroll of the year. We all know that. Um, by the way, if you have employees in Puerto Rico, don't forget the Christmas bonus has to get paid. I think the deadline is actually the 15th. It's been a while since I've done it, but Christmas bonus. Um, you wanna make sure you wanna get all of your adjustments in. You wanna get, so that's your third party sick pay, your short-term disability, your long-term disability. It's uh, moving expenses and tuition reimbursements and, taxable fringes and non-taxable fringes and all of those other things that usually show up on your desk on December 30th as a, hey, do, do we need to put this on a W-2 kind of conversation? Um, so it's useful actually to send a notification to all involved parties. So the accounting department, Usually HR department are the two that are most involved in these to say, hey, 
If we have any of these, it'd be really helpful if you got them to me by the middle of December so I can get them in the system and have time to make sure everything is done correctly. Pretty pleased with cheesecake on top. Um, so process your final payroll. You've got your adjustments in, fingers crossed it's all of them. Remind your employees that if they've had any change in status, they need to file a new W-4 form for 2022. In addition, we all know if an employee claims exempt in 2021, they need to file a new W-4 by February 15th, I believe, of 2022. Otherwise, you have to flip them to single and zero, which is max taxes. This is normally a really painful thing to do because you have to run reports and then you have to email people and then you have to stay on top of who's making changes. But if we flip to the next screen, look, UKG has finally decided to fix this for us. So this is under, it's a little fuzzy, but system configuration taxes, employee withholding forms, the W-4 page, there's an exemption expiration section now. You can turn this on. So the first thing it will do is all of the employees filing exempt on a federal form W-4 will get an email, assuming they have an email in the system, that says, hey, you need to update your W-4. You can pick the date that that email goes out on. And then if you look right below that, not in a box, but still super cool, reset. So on February 15th, any employee who has not gone in in 2022 and updated, I'm sorry, yes, in 2022 and submitted a new form for 2022, any of these exempt employees, they'll get set to single zero. If they've gone in and just signed up for exempt again, that's great, they'll be left alone but you don't have to track that anymore. It's all handled right there in the system and it is so much easier. And I think we have an example of what the script looks like for the email. So um, that's kind of what the email looks like. I believe it can be adjusted. Um, I, I don't have this on any of my clients yet, so I haven't been able to play with it, but I believe you can adjust that script to make it look a little more like something you would have written to give them an email address if they run into problems, um, anything like that. So this is saving but us it, all a lot of work. And it has a link right there for them to do it too. Yes. And if they don't, you have the button to just set them back. Yes. Perfect. Yay. They think of everything. Um, so, and here's my pro tip for everybody, communicate the last payroll of the year. I used to send an email to all of my managers saying, hey, December 24th, whatever the pay date is, is the last payroll of the year. We will not be cutting correcting checks. We will not be doing any payroll adjustments after that date. Now, were we actually that bad about it? No. If an employee missed a paycheck or missed more than half of their hours or something, I was more than happy to cut a manual check and get them taken care of. It's Christmas, this is what we do. But if an employee is missing half an hour or you paid them PTO when it should have been sick or something like that, those adjustments can wait till January when you have more time. So let your managers know, especially if you're one of those payroll departments that is like right on top of this and, and doing those adjustments and those corrections as soon as they come in, let them know, yeah, we've, we've got a, a blackout time because you've got a lot to do at the end of the year. And you really don't want to be doing this, especially because everyone else in your office is having a party. It's the end of the year. They're not busy. So do, send that communication out and let people know what's going on. Yay. And then our last step, it's the new year. Why do we still call it year end? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know why we call it year end other than this is when we actually do the year end stuff. Um, so what are you gonna do? You're gonna generate the year end tables. Again, the checklist show you how to do them all. It's um, pretty straightforward. You can do this as many times as you want. Up until the time when you post the W-2s for 2021, 
you can generate the year-end tables. Go ahead and do them now if you want to look at them and see what's going to happen with them. Um, the nice thing is if you do have a missing tax ID number, it will bomb. <laughs> It'll be like, yeah, we couldn't do anybody in Iowa because you don't have a tax ID for Iowa. So, you know, if you don't want to run a report, you could do that. I don't advise it, but you can do it. Um, you're going to run your, your year end tax tables. There are a bunch of reports, the tax liability, the wage summary reports that you want to look at for Q4 and for the whole year. There's a W-2 summary, summary report. There's a W-2 detail report. If, for instance, you need to know why Dave's W-2 or why Dave's numbers look weird, you can look at his W-2. Um, again, it's all on the checklist. So you can, like I said, you can generate, you can make corrections, you can regenerate, you can all of that stuff. Um, process your last minute adjustments that they forgot to tell you about until, you know, you came back to work after New Year's. <coughs> um, if you have tipped employees, you can import your gross receipts and process your tip allocations for 2021 at this point, if this is something you need to do. Um, the nice thing is the tip allocation report will run and say, yep, nobody needs it. Okay, move along. Um, so I have a note on this. I want to look at this. Okay. There's a deadline for getting corrections in because, of course, it's January now. So any adjustment you make is considered a prior year adjustment. You need to have these in the system by January 12th, I believe, if you're using UKG payment services. After that date, it's going to be an adjustment on their end as well. Uh, if you get it in before then, they haven't done the year-end taxes and it'll be part of the year-end taxes. But it's after that, it's gonna be when they manage to get the adjustment uh, files, adjustment filing done. If you use a third party, for your taxes, you need to find out what their deadline is. You need to find out what their process is for submitting stuff. And if you do taxes in-house, you need to find out what their deadline is. Understand that their year-end is just as much fun as yours is. So be kind to your tax team. Um, and that's it for this one. We did get a couple questions that came yes. in here. Um, the last, the, the, one of the questions came in on, in the last section, and I'm sorry, I just saw it, but it's for Indiana, county changes are effective on January 1st. How is that stored in UKG? Is, do you know? Yes. So it is on the employee record. Um, employee Bob lives in Indiana and he lives in Wayne County. Um, and he moves to a different county. Wayne County is the only county in Indiana that I can name off the top of my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was impressive. Yeah. When he moves, as when any employee moves, somebody has to go in and adjust their taxes. Okay. The, the employee can't set their local taxes themselves. It's, it's, it's a payroll or it's a somebody process. So basically your rule needs to be if an employee registers an address change after January 1st, we don't make any changes to their taxes. And then just run a report on, I would run, you can probably get this in one report or maybe two reports, but all of my employees in the county they live in, all of my employees in the county they're being taxed in, find the people that don't match and then update them. I don't think there's an automatic process with that which would be really sweet and somebody sh should suggest it to UKG. Um, but for right now, it's a matter of running reports and identifying changes. Thank you. And, and the other question that we got was, how do we make sure third-party sick pay is not included on the 941 form? So it is if you set up your third-party sick pay earning code correctly, it will not be included. So there are three ways to handle that. Uh, way number one is your disability company pays the employee that third-party sick pay, pay, withholds all of the taxes and sends them a W-2. Um, the second way to do it is 
they pay, they withhold taxes and they send it to you. You record it so it's on the W-2 and I believe I believe you are responsible for FUDA on that. And then the other way to do it is they send the employee a check and you have to run the whole thing through and pay the taxes on both sides. Um, that's very rare, but it, it's all in how that third party sick pay code is set up and Mosaic can help you with that if you're not sure. Okay, and now we're moving on to our final step Post, submit, and mail. Yay. And yeah, that screen pretty much said it. You're going to post your W-2s. You're going to submit your print files or send everything to your printer and stand there and watch it print. You're going to mail them or whoever's printing them is going to mail them. And you're done with year end. You can go. And we promised this that last year. We promised that there were going to be cocktail recipes. So here we go. Here's our cocktail recipe. This is our drink for year end 2022. Um, I'm calling it the Quarantini because I kind of like that name. Call it whatever you want. Um, my sister taught this to my underage daughter when my daughter went to visit her in Chicago this year because she decided my daughter needed to learn how to tend a bar. So she learned how to mix this drink. It is two parts lemonade, two parts cranberry juice, one part vodka or two or three, it's your drink. I'm not judging. Um, a sprig of rosemary for garnish. And if you want, you can uh, sugar the rim before you drink it. It's super tasty. I actually drink these without vodka because they're super tasty. You can add the vodka after year end, don't year end and drink. Um, once you're done 501 on that day, you can <laughs> go ahead and add it. Uh, Suzanne, we will I will make sure to email you um, later today and uh, with uh, one of our team members on on the email and they'll they'll reach out. So let me just make sure Kevin do you mind grabbing Suzanne's email address um, and and we'll reach out to you uh, to set to set up a conversation on that. Well thank you so much. MA, I appreciate it. I do have before we open the floor up for questions, I do want to let everyone know we will be at, UKG Works, which is the WFM side uh, conference. It is happening at the ARIA in a couple weeks in Las Vegas. There's also a virtual UKG Works. So if you're attending either one of those, please stop by, say hi. If you're attending the virtual conference, stop by our booth and you'll see me and Caitlin waiting for you to come say hi and you'll get a chance to enter um, for a pair of Apple AirPods, uh, which we're very excited to be raffling off this year. We will be doing the same for Connections. So Connections, the UKG Pro Conference is actually at the middle of December, December 13th, 14th and 15th, I believe. Um, also in Vegas, it's actually at the Win, and there will be a virtual component to that as well, where Caitlin and I will also be attending the virtual booth. So if you're going to Connections, please stop by and say hi, we would love to see you. And also you get a chance to enter for another pair of Apple AirPods. So we'll be, we'll be actually raffling off four of those all together. Um, so now I'll go ahead and open the floor up for questions. We do have a final slide at the end where you can see a few webinars uh, that we think, a few previous webinars that we think might be valuable for you, including a corrected W2 uh, webinar that MA did a couple years ago that might help anyone who has those pesky corrections and needs, needs to send out W2Cs at the end of the year. We'll open up for questions. Does anyone have any? Other questions? Definitely have time. Yes, we are sending out the slides from this presentation. <laughs> thanks for thanks for Kate, Kate, sending that out, Caitlin. So right after, at the end of today, in in a couple hours, actually, we'll be sending out a link, and you'll be able to, on that link, you'll be able to see a blog uh, that'll have the notes from today. And later today, we'll upload the recording to this and the presentation slides that we use. In the email that we send, you will also get the link to download those slides. So you'll be getting those for sure. Um, we had another question come in, MA. It says, could we go over the sick pay where employer is responsible to pay? Is it FUTA? FUTA. So typically, I'm gonna talk about the way I've typically seen it. Um, the other two ways to do it are 
very rare, which is typically the employ employer is responsible for paying FUDA and SUDA. Those are the unemployment taxes. Um, and then the earning code is, there is actually a third party sick pay tax category. There's more than one, um, which will actually just set it up. It'll, the earnings will count as, there, it's an offset deduction. Earnings go in, earnings come out, the taxes are calculated, the earnings are counted towards FUDA slash SUDA. Um, they are not counted towards Social Security, Medicare. Um, we do normally plug in the uh, federal income tax to Social Security and Medicare because that's what your, your third party, your disability company is supposed to send you. They're supposed to say, this was the gross, this was the, this tax, that tax, the other tax, this was the net. You plug all of that stuff in, it does the calculations um, and it is all based on the tax category. And I would literally have to pull up somebody's environment and look at that to figure out which one is which. Um, but it is, it is pretty straightforward. Um, we can certainly help making sure that's, that's set up properly. If you have any uh, any further questions with that, feel free to answer to my email that's going out later today too. Um, I think there's no more questions. Let me show you guys real quick. Like I said, you're gonna get this email, uh, an email with these slides in a few hours. You can click on these links on the side. All of these are by our lovely expert, Emma Morgan. She, we did webinars and blogs about year end. We've done them every year. Um, so we have navigating year end 2020. Uh, this one we did, we, we really did focus on, you know, those people who moved, all of the people who are now working from home, how do you communicate with them, what can we do to make those things easier. Um, then we have the one I mentioned, the prior year end adjustments and W2Cs. Like I said, uh, Mosaic has been a UKG Pro uh, partner since our, found, since our inception in 2011, so all of these webinars are UKG Pro. Um, related. And so feel free to watch those on those links. There's some notes and links to the slides that we use those years there as well. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. You can reach out directly to our emails or at info at Mosaic or through our website, Mosaic CG. If you want to keep in, keep in the loop with what we do and, and what we're doing, you can check out our Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Uh, one exciting thing that we did yesterday was that we actually won a UKG Partner Award. We won the Innovation Award with UKG. We're really proud. So you'll be seeing that all over all our social media if you go check it out now. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us and I hope every, everyone has a great rest of their day. Bye everyone.